Hello and welcome to my channel, We Quilt Studio. And today we are going to have a, a lesson on the Embered add-on module called Sfumato. And that's kind of like a painting with thread program. It turns a raster image into a painting or a sketch of some sort with you know using embroidery thread so and if you have the module your button here will be active you know it won't be grayed out and you can see mine is activated I should say so the first thing you want to do before you bring your raster image in is to make sure you have the correct hoop size and I'm going to be using my largest hoop for my Janome MB4 and if I go to hoop up here I already have it it's kind of saved as my default hoop but if you haven't done that you would click on hoop and it has all the brothers, the baby locks, and so on. And my Janome M1 hoop is here. It's actually 9.45 by 7.87 7 inches. So 9.45 is the width. And of course, you can make it vertical if you check this down here. So I'll click the check mark. And if you want Studio to always open to this size hoop, you would click Save as default. So with your hoop being selected, then you'll bring in your image. And this is a, a raster image. It's a preferably a PNG because they're better quality than, say, a JPEG. And you want it to be a really good quality image. You can tr tweak it here, and I'll show you in a minute. If it's not that great of quality, you, you can tweak it here in Studio. You do want it to be at least 5 by 7 inches or more, up to your hoop size, of course. Um, 5 by 7 usually gives you a pretty good rendering, 5 by 7 and above. Uh, you don't want to get it too big because then it, it'll be stitch intensive, unless you don't care that it's stitch intensive. and. Uh, you just want it to be a really good quality image. You can tweak it in like a, a graphics program like Photoshop or GIMP, which is free. I have GIMP. I used to have Photoshop, but um, I don't have the upgrades to it, so I just went with GIMP. But you can also tweak it here. So I'll show you all of that now. So you would click on Image import and I uh, downloaded this image here from Pixabay they have free unlicensed images that you can get for free unless you have an image that you you know a photo that you took and you want to use that but I'll just go with this image and of course when I downloaded it then I saved it on my desktop so I'll just click on it and say open. This always comes up and it says do you want to scale image to fit your current hoop? And you absolutely do want to do that because obviously you you want it to be the size of, of your hoop because that's why you set your hoop and you're using this hoop. Now maybe you don't want to scale it to fit your hoop maybe you want it smaller you know maybe your image is really small and you don't really want to scale it because you know that would distort it and you're just making a smaller design in which case you probably would have opened up a smaller hoop but at any rate um, you do want to scale it so we'll click yes if you don't it says if not scaled 100 image pixels 
corresponds to 10 millimeters of design size. So that's the way they have their resolution set. And 254 image pixels correspond to one inch of a design size. And that could, should kind of make sense to you because 2.54 uh, centimeters are in an inch or 25.4 millimeters are in an inch so this should all make sense. So we're just going to scale it to fit our current hoop. We'll hit yes and there's my image. I'll hit my minus button to zoom out. So there it is and it's covering my entire hoop. So now you may want to go in, you may not want it to cover your entire hoop. So if you want to tweak the image at all, you would go into image. And I'll go into edit image window first and then I'll go to the background filters. Edit image window. You have a rotate button. You can rotate your image however many degrees you want by just moving this slider. You know, you could just move it. Um, and then you'd have to hit apply, of course. I never rotate them, but you may have some image that you need to rotate. Maybe you took it crookedly and you want to rotate it so it, that it's, um, you know, horizontal or what have you. This one is your sizing. And you can see right now that, you know, it scaled my image to my hoop. My hoop is 9.5 four or five inches wide. But of course the design kept its aspect ratio so when it went to assign the height it obviously isn't the height of my hoop. The height of my hoop is almost eight inches. This would have been distorted. So the height is 6.26. .6. Now you may not want to use up your entire hoop you may feel more comfortable coming in a little bit, which I do. So I would say I'm going to make it just for the sake of uh, not being too stitch intensive. I'd probably go to like eight and a half or nine, but I'll go to eight on the width. So I'll click on this and I'll click 8 and I'll click the check and then since I had keep aspect ratio checked this height went down accordingly. So that's going to be the size of my picture and it's it's kind of close to the 5 by 7 actually I am going to go up to 9. I want it to be a little bit bigger. So now it's like 9 by 6 it just looks so good because I already did this once and it's just so beautiful. So I'm going to stick with that. It's still smaller than my, my hoop. And then this is your buffer. And this is a buffer that when you click on it, and I it must be set from before when I used it, you can right mouse click on and take it down to zero inches. And if you left mouse click on it, or just for me, I'm holding my pen stylus on it, it goes up to 0.2 inches. It's not a big buffer, but it's a little bit of buffer around the screen here so that you can select stuff and, you know, click off. And it's just nice to have a buffer around your image. So I'll leave it at 0.2 inches and click apply. So I've got my size and my buffer. So there you go. Now there's my my buffer around my image. And now that you have the image edit image window done, you can go into the background filters. So it's like as if you're in a graphic design software program and uh, you know you can change your brightness, contrast, gamma, saturation and so on. If your image isn't saturated well like this one is,
Spumato's going to have a hard time picking things up, you know, picking the colors up, because that's what Sfumato uh, relies on is the color, the luminosity or the saturation of your colors, and that's what it picks up to generate your Spumato stitches. So if it wasn't saturated enough, you could slide this and, you know, it's really going to pick things up now. It's That's going to give you a more colorful uh, sew out and you may want that or you may not. You may want it to, to blend more and look more natural. Now, if you didn't like that, you could just hit reset and it'll bring that back down to zero. And the same thing with these colors here. You know, if you go to the right, you get more red. And to the left, you get more cyan or blue. Reset. And the same thing down here. The brightness, you know, just like a graphic design software, it gets brighter, but it gets washed out. Reset. Contrast is maybe it's got too much definition and you want to bring it down and make it more fuzzy so the threads blend better. You know, so you'd move the contrast down or if it doesn't have enough contrast, which most of the photos I take don't, you can up it so that there's more definition between your objects in the image. So I'll reset that. You know, this was taken from Pixabay, so it's pretty darn good. So I'm just, I'm not going to change anything. Gamma is something that I love because if I go to the left on Gamma, it gets darker, but it gets sharper. And if you go up, you know, it, it does get a little bit more washed out. So, but I do like it because you can tweak gamma just ever so slightly negative and really bring it out. It's kind of like contrast, but it's better. But I don't need any of that either, so I'm just going to reset everything to zero. And I'll just hit cancel. So that's that if you wanted to adjust your, fil your background filters. They call it background filters, but it's, you know because I guess all of these, I don't know, go, go on in the background. I really don't know why they call it that, but these are just your filters, your image filters. So then once that's done, now you're ready to uh, create like, you know, a rectangle. You're, you're ready to select the parts of this image that you want Embered Sfumato to pick up. And for this, it, I'm just going to make a rectangle uh, as close as I can to the edges without going into the black. Now you can go into the, to the black. Uh, I usually don't, and I could experiment with what that does. I kind of think it makes a satin, and then if if you don't do it the same on both sides, well, you could center your rectangle. So I'll try it without it, and then I'll I'll try it. Well, if I have time, I'll just stick with the inside of this rectangle. In other words, I won't put my cursor out here in the black. So, so anyways, the way you make that rectangle is you click on Sfumato, and I just click once anywhere and click Shape, Rectangle, unless you want a rounded rectangle, you can do that as well, but I'll just click Rectangle, and I'll go up with the arrow up in the corner there, and I'll come down here and let go and I'll hit enter once and twice and if you know it's probably not com perfectly centered so it's just as if you drew a rectangle with your fill tool you can center this rectangle by going to transform bring to center 
and it moved ever so slightly. And so now this whole rectangle space inside of here is what Sfumato is going to pick up. So you, you click the Sfumato object over in your object window and it's already clicked, it's already highlighted because you know I had it clicked here on the screen. And you go to parameters, here's the parameters icon or button and here's your Sfumato window. So, kind of before you even click on this window, you want to decide how many color groups you want to have. In other words, let's say you didn't know, okay? I already know that I'm, I want to have like a brownish, a greenish and a bluish and the reason I know that and I'll click on the image tab here just to look at the image I've got browns greens and like blues the water is like greens and blues and you know so I'll have like three color groups but if you didn't know that you could just click on Sfumato. It's, it's still highlighted, but we're in the image tab. So I'll just go to the normal tab, as it always defaults to that anyways, when you're in Sfumato. And I'll click on parameters again. And if I don't know what color I want to use, I can just say, okay, I'm going to just pick a color from the image. So I'll click on the eyedropper over here and I'll click on, say, one of the browns. Click and I'll say, pick basic color. Okay, and so it picked the brown, this is the basic color, and it shows up as the middle color down here in your shades. So it's your basic color up here, it's your middle color down here. And so now is when you can say, okay, well, that's good, that's my, my color group for the browns. And now you could say, well, I don't know. I don't know what other colors I want besides those. So then that's when you can just say okay and then you can click on the image tab again and then you can decide on what colors were not in this list here. Well, the colors that weren't in that group of colors is my green and my blue. So then that tells me all together I want three color groups. Brown, green, and blue. But they don't call them color groups, they call them, click on parameters, mass colors. And we will cover uh, how to uh, do the mass colors in the full version of this video. Uh, it's quite involved when you're using masks, so uh, there'll be quite a lengthy video on that and I'll put the link to the website to go ahead and, and purchase that full version. So for now we can go ahead and just kind of make this a simplified sfumato. We could just use one color grouping and if we are using one color grouping we, we still have to decide what our 
group of colors is going to be, what our shade is going to be for just that one color. Now we could go with this this brownish, these brown tones, uh, be kind of vintagey and and so on. It might look pretty good. We can also go with like um, you know a gray scale. So let me hit OK, and I'm going to just copy and paste this so that we have both versions. So Control C, Control V, and then I'll click on the second one go to parameters and now this time for the uh, shading for this one for the basic color I'll just take the eyedropper and I'll look for a gray color and I can zoom in you know so I could get to the pixels and I could have just picked a gray uh, from the color palette, but this is more fun. Uh -huh, let's see. This looks kind of gray down here. We'll pick this one. We'll click it. Pick basic color. And then we have to decide, do we want our background color to be you know the color of our fabric so that um, the fabric shows through so let's say our fabric was black and we wanted our color to be to be that so we can click on it choose black or we could look at this color that was generated down here right click and look at the RGB code that it generated. It's kind of bluish but and we could write that down and then we could go ahead and right click on this and write down those same colors if we wanted or we could just use black. So that would be, this would be our grayscale uh, type of sfumato. So we could make it two different ways. Here is our We Quilt Studio website. And you'll see at the top uh, there's a link for social media streams with some free videos and whatnot, and then a link to sign up for online lessons, a link to the Embered files and tutorials, so the files would be like the ESM outlines and, and motifs, and then the video tutorials, and so that's for people who have Embered, and the online lessons are for Embered or uh, Inkscape and how I use them together. So the quilt and the hoop, those are mostly stitch files. I, I make some nested blocks that are easier to match up. There's no point to point matching. It's just blocks that nest together nicely. So it's prettier and it's quicker and it's easier. And then there's in the hoop and patterns for sale and just a few embroidery designs for sale and then I also do math tutoring uh, I have a degree in mathematics so and then there's a contact us link now the online lessons the way you would go about it is here's the way to sign up down here but you would contact we Quilt Studio on Facebook for an impromptu meeting or to make an appointment. And when we settle on a time and date and whatnot, then you would create a Skype account or you could just use your Facebook account. You would make a payment below. And then after the payment, we will connect on Skype or Facebook at, at your time, date and time or if it's right away impromptu. 
and the lessons are $25 for the first hour and then if we if you wanted to sign up for two hours you would pay up front for a two hour lesson you'd add another twenty dollars onto the twenty five so you'd get a little reduction and so it would be forty five dollars if you paid up front for a two hour lesson and if we're in our lesson and you only paid for one hour we could pause the one hour lesson while you go back to the website and pay for another hour lesson and then you would just come back to the lesson. So to actually sign up for the lesson, it's not really intuitive with the way Wix has it set up, so I'll walk you through it. So you do want to uh, click Add to Cart, and when you click Add to Cart, you'll see this. You do want to choose the price option. So let's just say you picked the one hour lesson and it shows the price but then you do have to click this add to cart button and then once you add it you can change your mind by hovering and clicking the X or you would just click the cart again to proceed and then that would take you to your PayPal account and if you did want to say go back to the description screen or what have you and click this X you would come back to this window but then it doesn't allow you to see the description of the lesson so in which case I usually just refresh my screen and then I'm back to the description and I can start all over again I can read it click on it and read it and then add to cart and select say one hour lesson click add to cart click the cart and that takes you to PayPal so if I click it uh, it's gonna charge me so it won't charge me because I won't go through with it but that's how you do it. So X and then refresh. And I would just wait for you. So that's how you sign up for lessons. And then here are the Embered files and tutorials. And you want to just order one thing at a time because uh, sometimes Wix is a little uh, buggy on their Wix is my host, my uh, website host. So you don't need a PayPal account to purchase any of these files. So the first batch are just the ESM, EOFs, and Stitch files. So some of them are Stitch files, some of them include both so you have to kind of read it and this explains what each of them mean and here are some of those files and some of them are outlines some of them here's a nested block stipple and this one the reason I have it on this page instead of the quilt and the hoop page is because I include the EOF with it so you'll you know the EOF is the embered vector format so you can make it as big as you want without distortion here's some more outlines that are all bunched together there's 34 of them these are all ESM files this is a quilt file and here's some motifs here's more uh, quilt files this is like a curvy uh, loopy noodle stipple and then you get to the video tutorials and this is the one that I'm starting now this is the one that I've been working on uh, for 2022 and here is the long version of the studio intro uh, that's free on YouTube that some people may have already seen and there'll be a sfumato video in here soon. I'm working on the 
the free sfumato video right now and then the the full version will be here probably next to this one and then these are some other tutorials you know that you can kind of scroll through and and check those out so that's the website so I hope you enjoy and I just want to thank everybody for all your support and please subscribe to my YouTube channel that'll really help me out and if, if everybody just bought one design from me it would really help me out because it would allow me to then create more free videos on YouTube so anyways <laughs> Thank you so much again, and have a wonderful day, and enjoy your stitching. Bye.